I just made this cinematic in just one day and I'm going to show you how we can do it too with some useful tips inside Unreal Engine 5. Hey devs, welcome to the new video. In this video, I'm going to give you some so useful tips for having a great quality cinematic inside of Unreal Engine 5. But before you're showing some tips, I just want to shoot out Bad Decision Studio YouTube channel. They have a great tutorial series that inspired me to do that. And actually, I just kind of get it a bit from them and I just made this big spaceship environment with your help uh if you want to do same you can you must definitely check it out their channel so i'm going to leave a link in the description so you can check from there too you already watched the cinematic so let's jump into unreal engine and let's see what we have done okay we came to unreal engine and as you can see i have a sci-fi robot army in here i just got this 3d model from sketchfab I'm going to leave a link in the description if you want to download it too. We can start with scene setup, how we set up the scene. I modeled this uh, cabinet in the Autodesk Maya, but actually you can do it inside of Unreal Engine too with, with modeling tools. If you don't want to use any kind of different uh, 3D software to model something, you can model inside of the Unreal Engine too which is one of the Bad Decision Studios videos about a modeling tools in Unreal. So make sure to check it out. And I just used this material. Let me show you to you. It's just a metal panels. It looks like that. I haven't changed a lot, and but I made this plane, which is, it's not so hard. I'm just using this texture. And I'm just giving a UV coordinate and I'm making it smaller as much as possible with UV tiling. Also, using the same texture and I'm using their alpha channel because those dots are white, as you can see. And I'm just multiplying with uh, just a constant variable. And I'm dividing eight. This is for, I just used for decreasing the light of the dots, but you don't have to use it. You can use a different approach. It is probably not the best way. And I'm using this into emissive color. It's metallic uh, roughness, just uh, parameters I'm using. Uh, you can use a map if you want. You don't have to use parameter. And also I'm just using the same text coordinates for normal maps. I'm using two different normal maps. One of them is for this line tiles and one of them is for dots and i'm just blending to those two and i'm just using as a normal map this scene setup is just a, a model like that it's not such a big deal i'm just using this and i'm using a glass material in here it's cube it's like that this is just diffusing the light coming from the HDRI and I just kind of like it this is one of the light tricks I want to show if you use any kind of uh, diffuser something like that or you can use different diffuser like a black or white to bounce it more uh, I'm using this glass cube in here make it look glass it's too glassy from this side so what we have in the scene as light. Light is one of the most important things that you can make some tricks. Even if they're not real, you still can use it. For example, there's a direct light in here. Uh, upside of the robots. And what it does, let me show you when I come to the in a camera actor. Actually, let's go it. Okay, as you can see, they're looking shiny because uh, the metallic and roughness values are higher than normal because they're robots. So I just placed a rectangle light in here. When I close this, whole scene getting changed, as you can see. 
this just one rectangular light is just changing a lot of the mood of the scene. That's why I, I like to use it a lot. I'm just using a high intensity and I'm just, uh, I just changed attention radius source width and height because when light's source is getting bigger, stuff, you're getting more softer lights. This is how kind of basic lighting works. And if your light source is smaller, your shadows getting sharper and your light bounds getting sharper too. There is some rectangular lights. I just placed them here and here. They just I just got four in the scene right now. And those are helping me to lightening up the scene. Without them, just HDR, it's still okay. But this is mostly a closet scene. So we have to use fake lights some. Because fake lights helping a lot to get that crispy real life lightning effect. So most of the scene that you saw in the internet, they probably has um, fake lights and I think you should use it too. What we have else in the scene, uh, we have post process, we have HDR backdrop. By the way, I'm just using this uh, basic HDR backdrop, it's 4K. And uh, I'm just using camera projection to more accurate light setup and just environment doom. Just it's just a basic HDR backdrop. How you can enable it? Go to Edit, Plugins, and type HDR backdrop, and you should enable this plugin from here. After that, you can come here and you click Lights, and you can add HDR backdrop. That way, you can use HDRIs as a light source. And finally, we have post process volume. Hardware uh, ray tracing is open right now. For this, I'm using Lumen as a global illuminating global illumination method and I'm also uh, seeing details here I just maximize their values and also lumen reflections by the way I'm using uh, heat lighting for reflection if you use project default uh, it's just not giving the best results for reflections I believe it's just more performance consuming but I always prefer to use heat lighting for reflections and also high transparency this is great for a glassy materials in the scene also there's a one other thing that ray tracing transparency you can use it and in the transparency tab there's a ray tracing and raster those are two different transparency styles ray tracing giving the best results i believe that's why i'm using ray tracing i have just one camera in here on the camera rig crane some of people doesn't like to use camera rig crane because they're thinking I just can uh, edit the transform of the camera in the sequencer, which is fine. I'm using sometimes like that too, but sometimes crane is helping a lot and it's just giving a better results if you want to achieve more uh, cinematic and realistic camera shots. Let me show you how. This is the second shot you saw in the video. So what I'm doing first, Camera or crane is changing the position like from the outside. Take out the camera crane. Going that way. But as you can see, camera is still in focus. Still, it is focusing to robots. How it's doing that? Actually, I have one another fake trick, which is most of the Unreal Engine artists using it. I have a fake. I have a fake sapphire in here. Actually, this sapphire, uh, I'm not rendering it, or you can make it so small, you not showing in the scene. But actually, there's one thing middle of our robot army, and our camera is focusing that. The fear that dots that position but how we are doing it go to cinema camera actor and go to look at tracking settings and i'm just enabling it uh, tracking and in the actor the track panel um as you can see i'm just tracking the sphere in the middle of our army so when i just move it's just always focusing in that dots 
and in that dot and it's just uh, tracking that the focus of the camera is also in the sphere but uh, it's okay because the sphere middle of the army so it's just easily focusing the front line of the army and I think it's looking okay let's come to camera settings which is the one of the most important and i have so crucial some tricks for you you should definitely check it out don't just skip it and i believe you should watch it as you can see this is not a standard shot what that means it's wider why i'm doing that it's just 21 to 9 it's not 16 to 9 and i like to use this aspect ratio a lot especially for cinematic things because it's just giving the best result I think it's looking more cinematic. There's one setting so important, which is squeeze factor. In the description, it says squeeze factor for anamorphic lenses. The cine lenses is different from normal lenses. The people who shooting movies using different lenses that that we use, for example, I'm using right. Now. Why? Because cine lenses must be different than normal lenses because those lenses actually made for shooting a photo not shooting a movie or not sh shooting a cinematic. Even they can capable of doing some video stuff with new technologies, they're still photography lenses. Don't forget that. But anaphoric lenses is definitely something else. And they're using for, they're using a lot in the movie industry. I'm just going to show you how, what is changed when I change the squeeze factor. When I go to one, as you can see, it is insane, more and more closer looking. When I added few squeeze factor, just giving me much more wider results. And though this much wider results doesn't affect my focal length. I'm using 1.4 focal length, which is so wider. And it's just getting, that means aperture it is all about how aperture is open that means how much light it's getting from the odd source and right now i'm using a so high value 1.4 is a, right now i'm using 1.42 that that means it's getting so much light into the lens what it does by the way it's just giving this blurry background if you decrease the, your uh f-stop which means aperture, it's just giving you a much blurry background in your scene. So because of this, I'm using a so low aperture, you need to handle focus method so well. If you're going to use manual, you just have to adjust every detail by yourself and you need to be careful about it. For example, I'm using tracking, sphere, and this so fear is in focus, so that's why the fear is in the middle of the army, as I said, it's just looking okay. The, another thing is animation. You saw some animation in the cinematic. How did I do it? Actually, I didn't do it in the sequencer. I just made that inside of the scene. So what did I do? I just got this robot. By the way, this robot using uh, Unreal Engine for mannequin. So if you have any animation that working good with Unreal Engine 4 mannequin skeletal mesh, it's completely fine. Because all of them has different animations, as you can see in the scene. I'm using those, and when I render this image, when I render this cinematic, it is acting like a play editor, so they're starting to later animation in the render you can just put everyone in the sequencer and you can just adjust and edit their animations but i didn't want to do it because there's a lot of robots in the scene so for example this one has an animation name looking around it is just initial position let's go to zero and as you can this is so basic animation i just put some animations most of the robots Maybe not all of them, if they're so far, they still have looking around. And I'm just using a couple different animations. There's two different idol and one looking around animation on the scene. So when I render this, 
they will start to play their animations and their position will change. By the way, if you're using a rig crane for your camera, you also need to put your rig crane into sequencer to animate it, but also you still need to use your cine camera actor too, because there must be a, a camera in the sequencer to render it. Don't forget to put it there. I just put my camera rig crane in the sequencer and for their values, for example, let's check. It's just a so simple movement. But for this movement, I can use curves to use the different styles. For example, this is so sharp edges. Let's check it out. There's literally no move. Bam, bam. I want to use something like that. Animation curve is definitely helpful. By the way, you can just uh, choose them with your mask, click it, and start auto. If we just got it more of the scene, this new to render settings, which is I'm using movie render QQ. Click the unsave it config. Actually, ultra. I'm using EXR seconds. Uh, I think it it is better than PNG and G, GPG. I think it's better than PNG. Uh, it it can give you some HDRI looking things, so you can edit them as an HDR, and I think it's a great feature. But if you're going to export as an EXR, it's just uh, increasing the file size so big, so you should be careful about it. Uh, I'm just using Deathrit rendering. In analyzing, it's based on you, but if you're just looking, uh, if you want to go to Edge, and if you want to blow your computer more and increase your uh, rendering time, is override it. Don't choose an NTLizing method because those are actually mostly made for games. Uh, for example, multi sample is still okay, but fast approximate NTLizing, temporal NTLizing, temporal. Uh, just do those two actually uh, basically working like DLSS. So they're not great for or cinematics. There's two different values. Petial sample and temporal sample. Let's go to 32 view. That way, if you're going to use path tracing, you should decide those counts based on your path tracing count. Color output. I can make a different, a completely another video about color output, but let me explain to you a bit. I just created a color output, which is the configuration. My transform source is linear rec 709 because rec 709 uh, is a color space that maybe 90% of televisions, monitors are using. So end of the day, your cinematic should be rec 709. But if you're using multiple things, for example, right now I'm using a Sony camera and I'm shooting with their own color gamut and I'm uh, recording something from the computer and it's just using a different color gamut. And let's say I have the, another uh, Canon camera in here and it has on their own color space. So because of those differences, there is a one color space. Uh, it's a kind of industry standard, by the way, ACES. And right now we're exporting as an ACES C. And in the DaVinci, I'm just getting all those cuts and transforming all of them into Rec 709 when I'm exporting as a video. If you want to learn about it, you can write a comment in down below. I can make a video about the two if you want. I'm just overriding the game with movie pipeline game mode. So I'm using cinematic quality settings for authorities and, and general scene quality. I'm using a uh, high resolution. I might use, look, I have the LSS and the LLL in here. 
And I, after I'm rendering this shot, I'm just putting all onto Da Vinci. And I'm just uh, playing with some colors. I'm adding sound and trying to make this video look better. And don't forget, I just made all of those images one day. And uh, I just try to give you some useful tips. And I want to show, I try to show how I'm doing in my scene and how I'm rendering my cinematics. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. This is my first video that I'm using this camera right now. So it's just a new thing for me. And I'm just trying to use to uh, looking to the lens is not so much easy as much as I thought before, but I'm just trying to do it anyway. And I'm trying to improve my content and I will try to make so much better videos. So your help matter a lot. So thank you for watching. Until the next video. See you all. I hope you're doing great work.